the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. He is and ever shall be. That we would have this mind within us, that there be no divisions amongst us. There is only one Christ. And this Christ, he is the one who calls us to this folly of the cross. And the folly of the cross can take many shapes and forms in our lives, and each one of us has a cross that we must bear. But today in the gospel, we, we see a particular cross that the Lord displays for us. The apostles, they are aware of a problem. They see that there is a, a real need, a real need, a need that these people, this mass of people had. They were hungry. They had no food to eat, and there was too far for them to go. So the Lord in his compassion, not just for the people, but the Lord in his compassion for his disciples who were blind, his disciples who had, as they always tend to, like we do, forget who Christ is. He says, let me show you something. And then he says to them to gather what they can. And so they gather these loaves and these two fish. So he blesses. He offers to the Father. And then lo and behold, in front of the apostles, a miracle happens. The need of the people is met. And this is the key I want to point to you to. The needs weren't simply met, there was an abundance. There was an abundance that was there. And did you notice that it says that the Lord calls the disciples to go on and he dispersed the crowds? The Lord was the one that dispersed the crowds. My brothers and my sisters, if we have our minds divided, as we so often do, I've been talking to you guys a lot lately about your thoughts and about the need to keep your thoughts focused. And that this is the source of encountering and gaining grace, but it's also the source of maintaining grace. It's one thing to get grace, it's another thing to hold it. And so to hold the grace, we must have ourselves focused. We must have our minds focused. And how do we focus our minds? We know who we're focusing on. When we're aware of who Christ is and what he calls us to, then it becomes easy to receive the grace, to hold the grace. The generosity of the Lord, the abundance that the Lord displays over and over again, this is foolishness to the world. Paul, in the Epistle of Romans, he says that we're more than conquerors. And so how can this be? This is because the Lord has called us to an abundance. He's called us to an abundance of love. And this abundance of love would look like fools to the world. He's called us to an abundance of boldness. And in this boldness and this lack of fear, we look like fools to the world. The Lord has called us to an abundance of mercy. And having mercy on those who have wronged us and have slandered us, we show the world that we worship the true Christ. It's in this abundance and this foolishness of not caring for how the world perceives us, not defending ourselves, not striving for our own opinions, but staying singular in our vision on the Christ. We will look foolish to the world, but it's in that daringness to be foolish in front of the world that we get the grace, that we get this abundance that these 12 baskets of bread and fish are left over. This abundance is only possible through a foolishness of the cross. Because it's in turning to the Lord, not in the defense of ourselves, not in our own strength, not in our own will, not in our pocketbooks, not in anything that we could hold in our hands, but alone in Him that we find grace. Because unless we see the need then there's no need to come to him. If there's no need to come to him, we see no miracle. My brothers and my sisters, this call to abundance and mercy, this call to boldness, this call to humility, this is the cross for us. We have to become more and more aware of the need to be different from the world, not out of hatred for the world, but out of love and mercy for the world. Because if we look just like the world, if we're scared, just like the world is, if we're greedy and stingy, just like the world is, if 
we are hardened and vengeful, just like the world is, but they won't see the Christ. They'll just see us, pitiful, just like they are. So let us have joy. Let us have joy that can only come in the folly of the cross. A madman who knows that he has nothing to lose. This is the folly we're called to. Let us embrace it because in this embracing, God will break us and he'll pour us out for the world. And the world will be fed by us. This is his good will for us, that we would be used by him for his mercy, for his love, for his foolishness. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.